Hi, and welcome to Exploring with the Estuarium. My name is Ariel, and I'll be your educator. Today, we're going to explore the intertidal zone of Tolmy State Park. Tolmy State Park is a Washington State Park located on Nisqually Reach. You will need a discovery pass or pay a day fee to park. The park is on 154 acres with trails, shelters, and an underwater park. Tolmy State Park offers 1,800 feet of shoreline to explore. The underwater park has an artificial reef built in cooperation with scuba divers. Near the beach access is a flowing freshwater creek that during low tide, you can see meandering through the mudflats. At extreme low tides, Tolmy State Park has plenty of beach to discover Puget Sound's marine life. Before we explore the intertidal zone, we first need to learn beach etiquette. Be a good beach steward and respect the creatures and their dwelling places. Walk on bare spots as much as possible. Walk slowly and carefully. There's life beneath your feet. Observe and leave animals where you find them. Touch animals gently with one wet finger. If you do pick up animals, stay low to the ground so that they don't have far to fall if you drop them. Leave shells, rocks, and driftwood on the beach. They are used by animals for shelter. Only overturn rocks that you can turn with one hand and overturn them with care. When you have finished looking, return rocks gently to their original position to avoid crushing anything that lives underneath. Fill any holes you may create. Piles of sand left on the beach can smother other organisms. Leave creatures attached to rocks rather than removing them for study since removal may kill them. Please only remove trash from the beach, nothing else. Vegetation and shellfish attach themselves to rocks and shells. One marine creature that attaches themselves to rocks and shells is the oyster. Oysters are bivalves, meaning that they have two shells. The oyster shells help to protect them from predators and also helps keep water in during low tide so that the oysters are still able to get oxygen. The oyster shell grows when the oyster secretes calcium carbonate from its mantle. As fat or oyster larvae, the oysters spend three to four weeks drifting as plankton before they find a hard place to settle and continue growing. Oysters love to attach themselves to other oysters because if it was a good place for that one oyster to survive, then it will be a good place for the others to survive too. It also allows for the oyster to absorb calcium carbonate, the mineral needed to build a strong shell, from the oyster shells breaking down from dead oysters. These large congregations of oysters is called an oyster bed. Once an oyster settles onto a surface, the oysters begin to filter feed on the microscopic animals, plants, and bacteria that live in the seawater. The more an oyster eats, the more energy it has to build and strengthen its shell using calcium carbonate. It can take up to three years for an oyster to reach the size of four to six inches, and the Pacific oyster can grow to over 10 inches long and can live up to 40 years. Other bivalves that call the beach home are blue mussels and clams. Mussels use bissel threads like ropes to tether themselves to objects so that they don't get carried away by the tide. Along with the blue mussels are barnacles. When the barnacle finds a place to settle down, it glues its head to the structure and builds a shell castle around them as protection. Barnacles do a handstand their entire lives and use their feet to gather food. Clams can be found in the sand and estuary streams where they can use their siphons to filter plankton out of the water. Watch where you step when exploring the beach because the shoreline is alive. Shore crabs scurry on the sand looking for food and seek shelter under the rocks. Shore crabs build tunnels and holes in the sand to make a quick escape from predators. You can also find shore crabs waiting for a meal to flow by as they camouflage at the bottom of the stream. Shore crabs come in many different sizes and color morphs. You can find crab molts all over the beach. As a crab grows, it has to shed its exoskeleton just like a snake sheds its skin. The crab grows a new exoskeleton under the old one and then pops a seam in the back between its carapace, or its back, and its tail flap. To see if it is a molt, or unfortunately a dead crab, pull up the back seam and see if it opens to expose the left behind gills. Then it's a molt. If it doesn't open, it's a dead crab. You can also tell the difference between a male and a female crab by the shape of their tail flap. Males have a triangle or lighthouse shape and the females have a round tail flap that covers most of the abdomen. 
Much larger crabs on the beach are kelp crabs. These crabs are part of the spider crab family. They use their spider-like legs to climb kelp and piers. Kelp crabs use their legs to grip and get around to search for food while also avoiding predators. One of the major adaptations is their claws, which are located in the front. They help ward off predators, fight males for territory, and use them to bring food to their mouths, which is also highly adapted. Kelp crab mouths are made up of many smaller legs that cut or grind food just like our teeth. Another adaptation kelp crabs have is their hard carapace, or exoskeleton. This helps protect them from predators looking to make them food. Graceful crabs are another common crab to find in low tide of the Puget Sound. Graceful crabs typically grow to about 4 inches across and have purple coloration with a white outline. They have large front claws that they use for both tearing apart large food items and for defense. Graceful crabs eat clams, other crustaceans, small fish, and will scavenge for food. Mature female graceful crabs molt between May and August. Mating happens after the females have molted and before the new exoskeleton can harden. Females will hold the fertilized eggs to their abdomen using their tail flap for three to five months until they hatch. Once hatched, the young crabs swim in the salt water until they reach maturity after about two years. If threatened, the crabs can completely bury themselves in the sand. You can see females release eggs during low tide. They use the waves of the water to slowly disperse hundreds of eggs into the tide. The females will use vegetation to cover themselves to hide from predators while trying to hatch their offspring. Please be kind and do not disturb the females during a stressful time. Tolme State Park is a great place to explore the intertidal zone and watch nature in action. Next time you explore during low tide, remember your beach etiquette and please be respectful of the animals that call Puget Sound home. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Exploring with the Estuarium. If you liked our video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wish to continue to get more of our educational videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook at the Puget Sound Estuarium. Bye.